Hey guys, what's up? It's Derek and today I wanted to share with you guys a simple OBS trick that you may not know of that can help you drastically improve the ability for viewers of your live stream to hear your voice when you're speaking. See, a common issue that streamers face, especially new streamers and one that I faced myself when starting out, was getting your audio levels adjusted just right so that your music and your gameplay was loud enough for your viewers to hear but not too loud that when you started speaking, it was hard for them to hear you. What most people don't realize is there's actually a simple tool within OBS or Streamlabs, whichever one you're using, that allows you to do this automatically within the software to where when you start speaking, the software will automatically lower the levels of your gameplay, your music, other people that you may be playing with that are chatting, and automatically Lower those levels so that your viewers can hear you when you speak and then when you finish speaking Automatically bring those levels back up to normal So this allows you even though you may have adjusted your levels correctly Most streamers have their gameplay and their music extremely low for their viewers to always make sure that they're able to be Heard with this trick. It allows you to keep those levels up at an optimal uh, decibel so that viewers can still hear your gameplay and music when you're not speaking at a comfortable level. We call this process audio ducking and it's actually something that we use commonly when we're editing videos within uh, software like Adobe Premiere uh, and a lot of times you'll see it within YouTube videos that you watch where there may be music playing during a b-roll sequence and then when the person comes back on camera to start speaking you'll notice the levels of that music and stuff kind of dip down. Also, before we jump into the computer and into this tutorial, I'd like to point out that I do myself stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night on Twitch. Link is in the description, or you can follow the link here, OMG, it's Derek.tv, to get taken directly to my Twitch page. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or anything else that I may be able to help you with when it comes to live streaming, feel free to drop in anytime and ask. I'm always happy to help. All right, guys, welcome to my desktop. As you can see, I got Streamlabs OBS open here in front of me, and I'm gonna show you guys quickly how to do audio ducking within Streamlabs OBS. If you're using OBS and not Streamlabs OBS, the process is exactly the same, so no worries. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is on the right side here, you have your mixer, which has your different sources. So as you can see here, I have my desktop audio. This is the audio that's coming through, whether it's your music, your gameplay, your Discord chat, anything like that is running through your desktop audio. And then right below that, I have Focusrite USB. That is my device that captures my XLR microphones and brings it into my computers. Yours may say microphone, it may say aux, whatever it is that you're using to capture your microphone. That's typically the second item within your mixer. If you've watched any of my previous videos on getting better sound out of your microphones, you'll know that we use filters on our microphones. So here you can see that I'm using a noise suppression, a noise gate, a compressor, and a gain. What we want to do in this particular case is actually add a filter to our desktop audio. So we're going to click the cog here next to your desktop audio, go to your filters, and what you want to add is the compressor filter. Okay, and you can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it named as compressor, but as you can see, I actually have it called ducking for my normal one. So with that said, you'll notice that under compressor, we have some different options. We have a ratio, threshold, attack, release, output, gain, and then we have down here at the bottom, side chain slash ducking source. So these are the ratios that we're gonna wanna change. I'm gonna go ahead and click my ducking source so you can see what I have set. And then I'm going to explain to you what each of these does, um, each of these options does, so that you can kind of tweak it to what sounds best for your particular live stream. So the ratio command I set to 8. By default, I believe it's set to 10, yes. This is the amount that the source drops down, your desktop audio down here, that it drops down once you start speaking to your microphone. So this is a ratio of 8 times to 1. So if you adjust it, you know, the higher the number, the more it's going to lower your desktop audio, which again is your music, your gameplay, your Discord chat, anything that's being mixed through your default, you know, 
audio source, uh, it's going to drop the levels automatically of those things. The threshold is at what percentage my microphone, the item that I'm ducking or side chaining, has to reach in order for that ratio to happen. So in order for the desktop audio volume to drop, my microphone must hit minus 30 decibels or higher. So minus 30 would be somewhere right about here. So when I'm talking, I almost always am hitting negative 30. Uh, sometimes negative 40 is pretty good as well. I kind of alternate between negative 30, negative 40 is kind of the range that you would want depending on how high you have your microphone set up for hitting. So we're going to put negative 40 for this. That just makes sure the, the biggest thing you want to worry about here with threshold is that you don't have it so low that when you're not speaking, any background noise you might be having that the microphone is picking up is not triggering your desktop audio to then drop in volume. The attack is how quickly once you start speaking that it drops your audio source. We want that to happen quickly, but we don't want it to happen so quickly that, that it doesn't have time to kind of fade down the volume. Because if you have it set to, let's say, you know, the normal on compressor is an attack of six. So what that means is as soon as you start speaking, your volume might go from zero DP, zero decibels, your desktop audio, down to like, you know, minus, you know, 30 or 40 decibels immediately. So it's like this. It's like your music's playing. Dot, 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 dot. That's a really quick attack speed. Instead, what we wanted to have it do is something like this. So again, it starts off loud and kind of goes to quiet. But we want it to happen at a semi-quick speed so that as soon as you start speaking, you're able to be heard. I like an attack, and this is all in milliseconds, of 50. That's 50 milliseconds. So it's just enough time that it's kind of a gradual drop in volume for your desktop audio, uh, but not too short that it's kind of a real quick drop and sounds really harsh to the human ear. The release is the same thing, but it's when you stop speaking. So when your microphone goes silent, how quickly the volume goes back up to normal. Now, again, if you have a super low release, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to be like, da, 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 ba, 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 da. and then you're, you know, just like you probably right there, we're just like, whoa, that's what it's going to sound like for your viewers. So I like to have a nice long release. That way the, the volume kind of gradually builds back up to normal, if that makes sense. And then the last thing is you want to select your side chain or ducking source. For me, again, I use an XLR microphone uh, and the device that captures that XLR microphone to my computer is called a Focusrite USB. Your audio source, your microphone source is what, you know, might be named whatever it is, depending on the microphone you're using or the system you're using. So you just want to make sure you select your microphone under this source. And that's it. Then you hit done and you're good to go. I'm going to delete the compressor extra when I add it. So again, that's kind of the numbers that I like that I found work best for you. Hopefully I explained it well enough that you can kind of adjust those for yourself and figure out what works best for your stream and what sounds best to you. Uh, but it should give you an idea of how to do that. Again, the most important thing to remember is that you're adding this filter to your desktop audio source, not to your microphone like we've done with past filters in some of my previous videos, which I'll link below on how to get a better sound out of your microphone by adding some different filters to it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, I just want to remind you guys that I do stream myself every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evening. Uh, you can find the link in the description below or follow this link, OMG, it's Derek.tv, which will take you directly to my Twitch page. Hope I was able to help you guys out. Hope I explained that well enough for you so that you actually have an understanding of how this stuff works. And until next time, peace out, everybody. Also, before we go, just to give you guys an example of how this works and sounds once you have it completed, I'm going to play some music. You'll see the audio volume here in the desktop audio. Then I will speak. You'll see the audio levels drop. You'll also hear it because it's currently active in my software. Uh, but again, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how this should sound once you're finished. When the sun rises, when the sun guys the uh, music is nice and loud and as you can see when I start talking you notice that the levels of the music drops down there into the green low yellow and when I stop speaking until the next time
time. Peace out, my friends. We're